Hello everyone, so I'm here with a new video tutorial. In this video we are going to be working on Dell EMC Power Math reporting. Let's open our demo system and let's log in with, two, with our SMC credential. Yep, click on login. So for our presentation today, uh, PowerMax Performance Reporting Unisphere very flexible in terms of the metrics you can graph. It is possible to graph any combination of metrics and save multiple graphs to a custom dashboard. So let's go back to the, to the Unisphere. And here we have our system. We have five systems. Let's select our PowerMax 0107. I just click on it. And but for the very first lesson, we are going to see a performance overview at storage group level so on our home dashboard as you know we have five tiles system health sg compliance capacity performance and protection let's select performance and on the left hand side here we have performance information of the system of the old system here we can see the host IOs per second, the latency and the throughput. But for the for this lesson, as we are going to see storage groups uh, on the five, sorry, on the left, on the right hand side, here we have the top five storage group for each metric. So let's select any of the storage group. So this is uh, this information before clicking the storage group. This is a really good, useful information while troubleshooting. So let's select it. I just click on it. So we are going to, this will bring us to the storage group performance view. And here we have five tabs, the storage group workload, the IO profile performance thresholds, and SG noise enable anomaly detection. So uh, for, the, for the very first one, let's go to the presentation and move to the next one. SG workload. SG workload is the amount of I/O being generated by the selected stress group and the response time. So here we can see uh, the overall metrics information of the stress groups. So this is the whole system. There is no stress group selected. If we click on this icon, we are going to see a list of our storage group. Let's select the very first one as a sample build server I just click on it and here we can see host read and writes per second host throughput read and write in per second response time backend read and writes average read and write size and response time bucket there is no buckets here so having this information as a stress administrator is really good so as part of our daily activities as a stress administrator we have to to troubleshoot performance issues, bottlenecks, problems. So having this view on the on the storage and the directors is really good for detecting any anomalies. So the next tab here is I/O profile. Um, I'm bringing the presentation back. So I/O profile. It has details around what type of I/O the storage group is generating. For example, reads and writes, hit and misses random again sequentials and size so here we can see uh, some really good information about this storage group uh, called build server here we have some io metrics about the percentage of reads and hits uh, the whose throughput which is 27.40 megabyte per second there is no sequential io so uh, with this IO profile, it will let us know what kind of behavior is having this storage group. So we can identify what is the expected behavior in the future, how it's behaving with the, uh, with the graphs and how it's consuming our storage uh, reads against writes, as we can see here. So for example, in this very, in this very good graph, we can see that uh, this particular SG has more random reads than sequential reads. So this will let us know how is it behaving. And here we can see that uh, the hits and misses. Uh, right now it has a, a write hits ratio of dot, dot six per second. 
and let's talk about the the read and write average size so uh, it has the very same information to kilobyte so it's balanced but this could be probably because it's a demo system and uh, there is no uh, real production consumption so this could be the reason so for sure in a real prod environment this would be a little bit different uh, the next tab that we have here is performance thresholds I just click on it while this is loading let's move to the next uh, to the next item here performance threshold this is how the storage group workload is performing on front-end back-end RTF ports cache and this group so if we go back to the performance threshold tab here we have all the associated information of the storage group as both front-end and back-end directors so here we can see the threshold distillation everything is looking good it's in green status and if I spend for example FE directors uh, we, we can see that uh, this storage group is flowing uh, to the external host through these six ports and the EF2D, 1D, 1C, 2C, all this list and if I select the very first one for example here we are going to find more information in case we have any kind of problem about consumption or any hack utilization of the hardware resource here we are going to see that information let's just let's select the the green the green bar and here we go so this is a really good tool for any storage administrator that wants to have a very good healthy system uh, somehow it's shrinking uh, i'm going to close it i'm not sure if i just leave any key hit let's try a new one let's click for example threshold port utilization this is auto adjusting but everything is on green status okay so the next the next tab here is the SG Noisy Neighbor. Let's click on it. And what is an SG Noisy Neighbor? A Noisy Neighbor is any storage group that has host access via the same port as the storage group we are currently seeing. So, as you know, during any uh, storage performance rules during we have to to see any any storage group associated and that associated flowing through the through those affected ports and see what's going on here so probably we are seeing any problem on storage group a uh, but we uh, with this SG neighbor we can see that probably um, this is being caused or even it's been impacted by a, a storage group B on that's flowing on the same port. So this SG noisy neighbor is a really good tool for performance troubleshooting. Uh, as this uh, in this scenario, we can see that there is no related SGs in this neighborhood, but everything is looking really good. And finally, we have anomaly detection. What is anomaly detection tab? Let's go there. Anom anomaly detection this setting enables or disables the anomaly detection functionality which calculates historical seasonality and detects anomalies outside the usual operating lower boundaries so in the past uh, i can tell you from my experience that there are some kind of uh, performance behaviors that only occurs on, on certain part of the week or certain part of the year any kind of month so with this anomaly detection on is enabled here we are going to see any pattern behavior on the time or i mean on a really long kind of relative block time and identify what's going on on the storage group or even if this is being performed at always side so any kind of maintenance that's occurring we are going to be able to see it from anomaly detection so this is this was the lesson one as overview uh, performance at storage group level so for the next lesson lesson number two we are going to see um, overview information at system level not storage group level 
so let's go there uh, for showing this I am going back to dashboard I just click on overview and selecting our system 0107 and for the left hand side menu here we have the performance information let's click on dashboard and we are going to be exploring in this lesson too uh, all these options dashboard charts analyze heat map reports and plan so i just click on the dashboard it's loading let's wait a couple of seconds probably I need to hit system here we go so here we can see uh, more information this is at storage group level sorry this is at system level sorry about that <laughs> and here we can see that uh, this is the cache uh, WP you have more information about host and BE IOs host throughput uh, BE and requests per second here we have also here the anomaly detection but this is at system level so here we have a lot of information of the system here we have the whole the poor groups have front-end directors back-end directors RDF and let's go to the next tab Let's click on performance then charts. In the charts section, we are going to be able to create our own chart, probably in a, any performance scenario that we may need to have different charts and troubleshooted at the same time. We can do it on this, uh, with this functionality. So here we can select our system, the category, as I mentioned, we are checking this at system level. And here we have the time frame. Um, this is the standard time frame for uh, for Unisfree. Here we have the real time, the diagnostic, and historical. So I'm so I'm leaving this at four hours. And for example, you probably want to know what is your data reduction ratio. So you can select it here, and then you can create a the chart. So here we can here we can see our chart. Everything is looking really good. So probably you want to uh, to compare with the backend utilization, so you can select here the the metric and then create. So this is how you can generate your charts, and after that you can save it and have a report, or you can identify any kind of behavior with this really good charting charting functionality. Let's talk about uh, again performance now analyze. During, during the shift of a storage administrator, you may, you may need to analyze your system, your current, uh, your current traffic. You can, do it this, uh, you can do this with Analyze tab. So with the Analyze functionality, first you have to select the system 0107. And we are right now under Diagnostic. So here we have three modes, the Diagnostic, the Historical, and the Real Time. So here we have uh, also a very good information um, that you can select. You can select the average of the metric or you can select the maximum of the metric. So here we can see that there is a, an alert in this storage group. So uh, I have to tell you that there is more information that the storage group. Here we have all the information of the system, storage group, directors, storage resources, system internals, data protection, and alerts and events. So for the very first storage group, it's a really good sample that's displaying the error as, as showing how, how is it going for purposes. And here we can see that these are the messages. So here we can see that this is a capacity alert that's having just uh, the disk space is below 10 gigabytes. So here we have the real time and uh, the real time uh, it's updating the data uh, with a ratio of two seconds and let's select again the system and for this kind of diagnostic at real time uh, we don't have any capacity so this is totally focused on on traffic of the data so here we have directors and parts and externals external directors so everything is looking fine here 
and for historical in case you may need to, to check something that happened in the past you he, here you have the historical let's again select our system of 107 and again it's having uh, information on the whole system so here we can navigate everywhere we, we want and again we, we can select here the um, the time frame so here we have the last 24 hours last week last month last six months last 12 months and in case you want to export this and present it to your manager you can do it here with export data uh, the next functionality here is heat map the heat map is going to present us in a graphical way the utilization of the hardware so here we have on the top top right side here we have the utilization traffic light and you know green is looking healthy and really good so usage is between 0, zero and 10 percent uh, light green is 10 to 20 percent so in case we identify we are going to identify any problem with with a warning color in this case as this is a demo system everything is looking really good but in case we have any yellow or red color this could be a symptom that any threshold has been is about to be rich so at this point everything is looking really good here on this metrics let's click on ok all right so also we can create performance reports let's click on the report functionality and here we have um, this, um, these reports that we can run and modify so I am going to create a new report I previously created this test report <laughs> I am going, I'm creating a new one and here we have the information of our report so the name of our report is going to be test underscore report 2 and the description is going to be the same all right so here we can see the our system that the time frame of, of this report is going to be uh, last 24 hours here we can see the three uh, standard time that's managed by by the unit spree and the format of this report we, we can select csv or xml so this is for creating a report let's create a query here we can click on test underscore query two let's type again let test underscore query two and what is uh, what is this query for we are going to see that here right here we can see that the category so this query is going to check you can check everything or our system here we have the backend director board team so we have a plenty of options here of our system so let's select just for this example front end director and we are choosing all instances uh, from FE let's click again on FE and what's the metric we want so probably we want just a basic percentage let's select the metric let's add it here and then click OK all right so and this report functionality is really good as it has a an schedule so we can create an schedule for all reports and we can enable an email so probably we want to send this email to our team to our manager to, uh, to any distribution list or mailbox so we can do it uh, with this option so right now we are just enabling the schedule i just click and we can run this report every 24 hours here we have the day so this is really good for showing purposes let's click on ok and here we have our test report too we can run it right away and it will generate the csv file so here we can see it and from here the storage admin can troubleshoot anything required now for the last here we have the plan so if i click on plan here we have the srp key and what is plan? Plan it will it will display uh, a predicted future data consumption that is based on a linear projection. So right now we don't have that information in this demo system because we need at least ten days of data data utilization, and this demo doesn't have it. But uh, this is really good for for a storage admin that wants to have a prediction on how is it being consumed the data. Uh, when we are going to feel any threshold we are going to reach any kind of threshold and this is really good for for planning any for planning 
uh, any migration or any move uh, buying a new system and starting kind of this migration or having everything under control talking about the capacity and provisioning this is it for today thank you